Hello everyone, I'm Axel from FX Home, the developers behind Vegas FX and Vegas Image. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create glitch and RGB split distortion in Vegas FX without using any outside stock footage. The techniques we use can be applied in a variety of ways in any of your own projects. Let's start by opening the window menu and selecting Workspace Compositing. This workspace gives us direct access to the media panel, which we will need to import our footage. Click the Import button and select the Firelit Face and Ruby Beach videos provided with this tutorial. Of course, you can use any two media files of your own if you prefer. Then click the New Composite Shot button to create a timeline. Name it Glitch Noise and make it 8 seconds long. For the template, select the 1080p at 29.97 frames per second option and click OK. We can create layers on the timeline by adding media or through the New Layer menu. We want a plain layer, which is simply a rectangular layer filled with a solid color. Name the plane Distortion, but you can leave the other settings at their defaults and click OK. Planes serve a variety of purposes, one of which is to be a holder for effects. We will use this plane layer to hold the distortion pattern used to generate our glitching. The Effects panel contains hundreds of effects, which you can use by dragging them onto any layer. Type Fractal into the search box at the top to find the Fractal Noise effect, and drag Fractal Noise onto the distortion layer. The Controls panel gives us access to the settings for the selected layer, including the controls for any effects applied to the layer. In the Controls panel, Open the controls for Effects, Fractal Noise. These settings change the way that the noise is rendered. Basically, we will adjust the settings here to create the distortion pattern which will be used later on, so we want to make it pretty chaotic and unpredictable. Change the type to Wood, and the interpolation to Block. Let's edit the Seed next. Each Seed value gives a different randomized pattern to the noise. By keyframing the value, we can animate the noise over time. To activate keyframes, click the circle next to Seed. This creates a keyframe on the timeline. Then skip to the end of the timeline and change the number. The larger the change in the value, the faster the animation will be. In the Transform properties, we will keyframe the scale as well, but in a more random fashion. I don't have any specific values in mind when I do this. I just skip a few frames forward and adjust the slider to something random. When you have enough keyframes, you can copy and paste them all to create even more erratic movement. Another trick is to highlight all of the keyframes and set their interpolation to constant. This means the value won't smoothly transition from one keyframe to the next, it'll pop abruptly from one value to another. I'll move up a bit and do the same thing for the position keyframing it to add random values at different points, then copying and pasting the keyframes. We're not done with this comp yet, but to show you what we've achieved so far, and how it's going to work, let's create a new composite shot by clicking the Composite Shot button in the Media panel, and name it Main. Drag the Glitch Noise Composite Shot into the timeline, as well as our two videos. Hide the Glitch Noise layer. Find the Set Matte effect and add it to your top video layer. Set Matte allows us to use one layer to control the visibility of another layer. So we will use the Glitch Noise to control where our top video layer is visible. In the controls for the Set Matte, set the Source layer to the Glitch Noise and the Matte Source to Luminance, since the noise is black and white. If we play it, you can see the beginnings of the glitch effect. But we don't want the glitch to be so constant or consistent. To break it up, keyframe the opacity of the top video layer to randomly use values of 0 or 100%. Set these keyframes to constant as well, so it doesn't fade, the layer is always on or off. Now that we have seen that the concept is working, let's go back into the Glitch Noise comp and add some more detail into the fractal noise. In the Transform values, you'll find the Axis Scale to stretch the texture horizontally and vertically. Same as before, let's keyframe these to change quickly and at random. 
Continue keyframing the many different properties and values of the fractal noise to get as much variation as you want. If you want to make the top video layer completely visible at any point, you can boost the exposure and offset values in the fractal noise appearance controls to add more white into the noise. Once you've got the glitches all sorted, let's move on to the RGB split effect. In the main comp, create a grade layer and name it red. Add the channel mixer effect and choose the all zeros preset. Then in the red channel, set the red value to one. Change the layers blend mode to lighten and it seems to disappear. Now add a shake effect and you can start to see it in the video. I just want it to move on one axis, so go into the individual controls and turn down the Y value and the tilt shake. Using only the X values will cause it to move only left and right. If you would like some vertical movement, you could increase the Y values as well. Turn up the amount a bit if you like, but try to keep it somewhat subtle. Now copy the grade layer twice and name the copies green and blue. On the green layer, select all zeros in the channel mixer again, then increase the green channel to one. In the shake settings, change the seed so that the shake moves differently. Repeat this one more time for the blue layer. Now if I turn all three of these on and zoom in, you can see the effect as the three colors move independently. In addition to the videos glitching out and breaking up, they should also be displaced a bit. Create another grade layer, place it directly above our lowest video, and add the displacement effect to it. Similar to the set matte effect, change the source layer to the glitch noise and the channel selectors to luminance. Adjust the horizontal and vertical displacement sliders to see the effect. You can copy and paste the opacity keyframes from the top video layer onto this grade layer. The most important thing with this effect is to keep stacking and combining levels of distortion, displacement, and color. The more random you make it, the more realistic the end result will appear. If you want to follow along with this tutorial, but don't yet have Vegas Post, you can download a free trial version from the Vegas Creative Software website. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video.